This Peak Syndicated columnist, Fox News contributor, and Jason Trenner, chairman and CEO of Stratega Securities. Welcome to both of you. Jason, I'll start with you. I just think, to me, the Powell thing has to be political because he's telling me, on the one hand, how great the economy is. I mean, you can read the press release and read the notes. The economy is in great shape, says he. And then he goes ahead and slashes 50 basis points, which has only happened three times in the last 25 years. If it's so great, then why is he cutting 50 basis points? On the other hand, maybe it's not so great, and he's covering up more bad jobs numbers, in which case um, one has to assume the Biden-Harris economy ain't doing so good. Yeah. I kind of think, or it's, both. I think it's. I think it's a little bit more of the former because even before yesterday, stock prices were near all-time highs. Credit spreads are tight. Dollars weakening. Gold's higher. None of those things are consistent with uh, a Fed that's too tight. Um, and it, it seems to me that uh, uh, chances of a second wave of inflation, in our opinion, are quite high, because you have 20 million. Uh, newcomers into the uh, economy that are putting pressure on housing. You have decarbonization, you have deglobalization, and you have deficits of 7% of GDP, as far as the eye can see. So, uh, in my opinion, I would be very careful, if I were the Fed, about doing any victory laps about inflation here. But he took a victory lap, Liz. Yeah. And he, he took a victory lap, cutting rates by 50 basis points. Okay, so stocks loved it on the day after. We'll see how that whole thing plays out. Again, I'm... <laughs> Either you have three options here, okay? Either it's a political move to nudge down interest rates for Kamala, you know, get some mortgage rates lower, or car loans or credit cards, or the economy is in lousy shape, or it could be both. I mean, I don't know. He's caught in a contradiction. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, prior to the meeting, there were a lot of people cautioning against a 50 basis point rise, hike, just because of what it would signal about the economy. So what? What is going on in the labor market? He talked about a solid labor market. Is it solid? We have no idea because the jobs numbers that come out every month are radically revised in the following month. He talked about the 89,000 jobs that were created uh, in July and how he should have moved in August to cut rates. Maybe that's true. But was that 89,000 legitimate or was it 20,000 or was it a negative number? Larry, we just don't know because the revisions have been so incredibly drastic. In this case, it seems to me, so you had a dissenter, Michelle Bowman, uh, Mickey Bowman. only Mickey Bowman. wanted a yes. quarter point rise. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened for 20 years, that you've actually had a Fed come out with a decision that was not 100% yeah, unanimous. Good I think her. it was good for her because, I mean, to your point, it's either right that the job market is solid or it isn't. My view is that we have a truly bifurcated economy. Wealthy people are doing well. Mm -hmm. Non-wealthy people, low-income Americans are not doing well, and there's a real bifurcation. Big business is doing well, small businesses are not. And the people who are really concerned about unemployment going through the roof are people looking at the small business that's what numbers. The, that's what these income numbers show. It's very interesting, the yeah. bifurcation. I mean, these are median numbers, so you chop off the highs and the lows. This is right down the middle. These are not rich people. They're not the poorest people either, but they're doing very poorly during the Biden years. I mean, that's all there is to it. The, the rise in income is low. The rise in prices, the CPI is high. The combination is devastating, and that's why Trump wins on the economy against Biden, now against Harris, whoever else they want to throw in. He's going to beat him on the economy. I I don't think that people understand that point, and I apologize to our viewers and listeners, but a few numbers is not always a bad thing. You can go through it. Trust me, you can get through it, and we'll put it online, and you'll see them, and you can parse through it on your own. Um, Jason, you are still worried about inflation, so that's interesting because basically the Fed took a victory lap on that, patted themselves on the back. This is after they blew it for two years, right. of course, but they've taken a victory lap on that. You know, we've done work uh, in our shop. We've looked at 30 countries of the last 100 years, and what we found is once there's one wave of inflation over 6%, the chances of getting another wave of inflation over 6% are about 9 in 10. Mm. And the reason why that is is that people get poorer during the first wave of inflation, and so wage pressures still remain well after the first wave of inflation crests. So if you look at Boeing as an example, you have 96% of the union members rejecting 25% over four years. Mm. 
wanting, so it's not even, so 25% clearly is not the right number. It's they want 40. So this is one of the reasons why businesses, it seems to me, are gonna either, they're probably going to have to continue to increase prices because people have gotten poor, their the, uh, wages and wage earners are gonna wanna pick up. And I think another wave of inflation is quite likely if the Fed is going to pull its punches like it's doing. Well, right and, now. and that's what the foreign central banks are, are counting on. That's why the Bank of England didn't raise, uh, didn't cut their rates, right? And they're not alone. Other central banks are doing exactly that. They're saying, it's better, let's wait and see. Um, here's Trump at a Bitcoin bar yesterday. Got a this guy picks his spots very beautifully. Bitcoin <laughs> bars. <laughs> here, Fox TV. Anyway, here he is. Here's what he's talking about the Fed at the Bitcoin bar. Take a listen. What's your reaction to the Fed setting interest rates today? I guess it shows the economy is very bad to cut it by that much. Uh, assuming they're not just playing politics, the uh, economy would be very bad, or they're playing politics, one or the other. Or it could be both. Anyway, Bitcoin bar, Gutfeld show. He did very well on Gutfeld, but we're. We're saving that for later in the show. Um, I think he's on to something. He, I think he's going to be critical of Jay Powell, and I think he's right to be. This kind of shenanigan, 50, you could have waited till the day after the election, which is the next Fed meeting. Right. 25 bips, I don't think anybody would have said much about Agree. it at all, including Mr. Trump, including myself, for whatever that matters. But 50, for what reason? Really? I, I agree, Larry. Historically, Fed chairs have really gone out of their way not to look Political. Mm -hmm. This, it, whether it's true or not, this looks political. To your point, he could have just done 25, 25 through the end of the year, and I don't think an eyebrow would be raised. I think that's exactly right. Jason, um, well, I think it's. I'll just say, I think it's interesting that he's at a Bitcoin bar. Yeah. Because I can tell you, the the other side is deathly afraid of both gold and private cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. They want central bank digital currencies so they can control the money supply. It seems to me, and J.D. Vance, I think, is the most pro-Bitcoin, pro-crypto uh, congressman in both the Senate and the House. That suggests that you're not afraid uh, of the dollar losing its reserve currency because you're gonna do things to strengthen the economy. The other side is deathly afraid and want to actually put regulations on crypto uh, and are very uncomfortable with it. So to me, that's a very important signal that the president just made. Uh, it, to Good me, point. I think it's a very positive. I think it's a very positive thing. Also, did I see gold? Gold is now through twenty six hundred bucks and holding that's nicely, right. which is really a de facto devaluation of the dollar. Yeah. I know people don't think in those terms anymore, but maybe they should. I know the Fed doesn't look at such things, but maybe they should. Gold is soaring. What's that tell you, Liz? Well, for one thing, our, the dollar is sinking against mm -hmm. absolutely everything, including mm -hmm. the including gold, because we are lowering rates and nobody else is. So that does kind of devalue the dollar right there. Um, I, I think people actually are very... Th this has been a market that no one has celebrated. And I think that's one of these times in the Wall Street where, yeah, stocks are going up like crazy and everyone's sort of saying, whoa, this may not be for real. And, you know, kind of questioning questioning what is really underpinning it. Again, looking at so many indicators of a slowing economy, and now we have Powell sort of implicitly implying that, yeah, things are actually coming down. Yeah, they may be coming unhinged. I don't know. Jason, you heard Trump uh, out in Long Island. Sounded yeah. on message to me. Absolutely. Growth message. World's reserve currency, tax cuts. I mean, come on, doesn't get any better than that. That's better than some stupid ass finagling of the interest rate on the eve of the election. Really? Hey, I mean, how about a real policy, for God's sake? Well, amen. I mean, Jay amen. Powell ever talk about well, oh, wait, tax cuts are bad, spending is good. He has accommodated the Biden Harris spending for nearly yeah. four years. That That's shame on Jay him. Powell. I agree. Shame on him. Yep. Let's yep. put that in the rip. Liz's point. Shame <laughs> on him. We might even quote her from this set right here. No, I mean it, though. I love that. Biden came out today and said he hadn't talked to Powell in four years or whatever. We have video of him meeting with Jay Powell and talking to him a number of times. Right. I don't forgot. know what he's talking no, no, about. He forgot. <laughs> he, forgot. <laughs> he, forgot. <laughs> he forgot. I mean, it's really. off the beach. It's just all not. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, Last word, Jason yeah, Powell. Harris and Biden, they generally tend to view people's income as some sort of dispensation of government, mm. uh, whereas our, you know uh, Republicans and Donald Trump believe it's it's your money, and this is a government uh, of, for, and by the people. I'll so. tell you what, just I got to interrupt that, but suppose she wins, okay? It's possible, no questions possible. You would have higher taxes and easier money. What does that mean? 
higher taxes and easier money. That means fewer goods and more money, which is a classic example. That would be your nineteen. That yeah. would be your nineteen seventies yeah. repeat of that, inflation right totally there. Right. If she wins, and Lord knows Jay Powell's trying to do his best to get her over the finish line. We will see. Liz Peak, Jason Trenna. Thank you, kids. Appreciate it very much.